The next SpaceX Starship test flight has been delayed from mid-September to no earlier than late November. And SpaceX is blaming the FAA, and Congress is blaming the FAA, leading to a surprisingly heated hearing today in the House. We are talking specifically about the FAA Part 450, which is not something that's usually talked about, but that is a regulation that the FAA put in place a couple of years ago that is being questioned or has continuously been questioned over the past few years as to how well it works and whether or not it needs to be changed. I wanna talk about how we got here, what the complaints are with both Congress and the space industry, and what SpaceX is saying is holding up the next test flight. I'm Laura Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. At one point, it was my job to actually interface with the FAA and the DOT separately about space flight. And so while I am not a lawyer and I am not a legal expert, so I cannot dive into the legalities of space flight regulations in Part 450, I can tell you how we got here and what the current status is with space flight in general and Starship in particular being held up by these regulations. This morning, the House of Representatives Committee on Science, Space, and Technology held a hearing, and usually these kinds of hearings are pretty dry, but <laughs> I was surprised that this one got quite a bit heated. It was quite spicy at certain points, particularly when Starship got mentioned, which didn't happen until the latter half of the hearing. I will get to the particulars about Starship and why the next test flight is no earlier than late November, but first I want to talk about what in the world Part 450 is. Part of what? We are talking about the Code of Federal Relations type Title 14, which is aeronautics and space. And Part 450 covers launch and re-entry license requirements. And this is a fairly new thing. I'm going to go into the history in a moment. According to the FAA website, it covers launch operations that extend 150 kilometers in altitude and have a thrust of excess of 200,000 pounds second or are launching a payload for hire. So absolutely, it applies to SpaceX Starship. If you are really bored, I have the part 450 linked below if you want to read in detail what it actually covers, what the specifics are. And there are all kinds of links on the FAA website about checklists and what the requirements are for part 450. The important thing to note here is that for part 450 was supposed to streamline spaceflight regulations. It actually stems back to 2018. The Trump administration put out a number of space policy directives, and Space Policy Directive 2 was streamlining regulations on commercial use of space. I will link that below as well, but in part it says, the Secretary of Transportation shall consider the following, requiring a single license for all type of commercial spaceflight launch and reentry operations, and replacing prescriptive requirements in the commercial spaceflight launch and reentry licensing process with performance-based criteria. So basically, the way that it was before was really outdated. I think everyone in industry and government agrees that the regulations that the FAA AST, when I say AST, I mean the Office of Space Transportation, the way that that was operating before Part 450 was outdated and not serving the commercial spaceflight industry. Back in 2018, this directive was issued and the FAA started to put out draft recommendations. They got the industry input. There was a lot of back and forth. It was an iterative process, but a lot of people felt it was rushed when the FAA put out in October of 2020, so we're talking about four years ago, the stream launch and reentry licensing requirements. And that was published in October to take in effect in 90 days. But that doesn't mean the industry has 90 days to comply. That meant that the regulations went into effect in 90 days and that the industry actually had until March of 2026 to completely comply. And according to the hearing this morning, only six licenses out of 20 that need to be converted, only six have been issued under part 450. So that's not that many. It's not happening very quickly. In fact, it's happening very slowly, which is one of the main concerns. And not only the slow speed, which is delaying things like Starship, but also the expense. There was one congressman in particular who did not name names, he did not say who, but he said he talked to somebody in industry where 10% of their budget goes towards the paperwork for the FAA registration and licensing. That is antidotal evidence, but I would sure like to know actually how much this is costing industry in time and in money compared to how it used to be. And the FAA is saying that the industry is still treating this the way it 
treated the old regulations. It hasn't changed its mindset. And the industry is saying otherwise. So <laughs> there's a lot of complaints back and forth about how Part 450 needs to be reevaluated. And the FAA agrees. In fact, Kelvin Coleman, the head of the FAA AST, said in the hearing today, as well as back in February at the conference that is held every year at the FAA, FAA Commercial Space Transportation Conference. It's held either January, February, every year. He actually said that it was time to revisit Part 450 and see how it's working for industry. And he got that wish today with this hearing where through Congress, industry hit back and said it's not serving us. And if any of this sounds familiar, almost a year ago, back in October of last year, during a Senate hearing, William Gerstemeyer, who used to be a NASA employee, now is under SpaceX, he had a lot of things to say about Part 450, including the pace of American regulation must match the pace of American innovation. We are falling behind. We are at a breaking point. And also, when we have regulatory delays such as we're facing right now, that slows down developmental test flights and ultimately slows down our support to NASA and slows down our support for what we need to do to return humans back to the surface of the moon again. A continuous delay in each and every test flight adds up and eventually we will lose our lead and we will see China land on the moon before we do. Now, historically, of course, the United States landed on the moon with people before China did. But that's not the current geopolitical reality. That is what we are talking about here when we're talking about getting Starship ready to not just be an operational vehicle for SpaceX for any mission, but in particular for Artemis 3. And this same line of thinking was repeated today, this morning, in the opening statement by Representative Brian Babin, who pretty much stated that same exact argument, that regulations with the FAA are slowing down Starship, which is slowing down NASA's progress in the Artemis program, which is allowing China to be able to catch up and maybe land humans on the moon before the United States does. In the hearing this morning, during questioning, Representative Mike Garcia actually brought up the fact that the FAA license is going to be issued no earlier than late November for the next Starship test flight, uh, number five. And then at the same time, pretty much, SpaceX put out a long update, which Again, I will link below, which confirms that late November is the current no earlier than date for the next Starship test flight and goes into quite a bit of detail about, from their point of view, what is holding it up and its environmental regulations. The update on their website says, in part, we recently received a launch license date estimate of late November from the FAA, the government agency responsible for licensing Starship flight tests. This is a more than two month delay to the previous communicated date of mid-September. This delay was not based on any new safety concern, but instead driven by superfluous environmental analysis. Those are their words. I think that from the FAA's point of view and from the environmentalist point of view, they would use different words. One thing that stood out to me in particular was the difference in mission and the difference in vehicle, which was talked about today in the hearing. So FAA's Kelvin Coleman, he was asked, what is holding up the Starship test flight? Tell me, when we put all these spaceships, more than anybody else in the world, already up there, why the same process that we used to approve that, all of a sudden, has something changed? Well, Not safety. I, I, but let's, let's, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Good. Uh, let's take uh, Starship Super Heavy, Boca Chica. We issue a 450 license to SpaceX for that activity. You ask what changes. Uh, missions change. Technologies on the vehicle change, which require a modification to the license. And yet, according to SpaceX, there are no changes to the vehicle. There's changes to the mission, but those changes to the mission should not require such a long delay. So there's definitely a back and forth, a battle going on right now, no surprise, between SpaceX and the environmental regulations and FAA and what they are responsible for under their own regulations and under their partner government agencies. And here's where I say that I am not an expert in environmental regulation. So if you're looking for analysis on environmental regulation from either side, you might want to look elsewhere because I can only give you from the space flight side what this is doing what we're seeing. And what we're seeing is the industry and Congress are both dissatisfied with Part 450. In what could not have been a coincidence, immediately after the House hearing today, the FAA posted a link to the next Comstack meeting. Comstack is Commercial Space Transportation Advisory Committee. 
And within that CompStack meeting, aside from what's posted on the agenda, which I will link below, there is a chance for the public to weigh in on matters of FAA regulation. If you are a taxpaying resident of the United States, you could weigh in through that committee. I don't know how much influence those comments would have, but you have a voice and you can use that voice. Another thing that's supposedly being put in place, again mentioned back in February in that conference that the FAA held, was a committee that's supposed to be looking at what they can do to change Part 450 or streamline regulations. That has not been put together yet. Aerospace Rulemaking Committee. I have no idea why that's called SPARC. That is supposed to be formed by the FAA by the fall, and that got brought up in the hearing this morning where Calvin Coleman said, it's not fall yet, it's still summer, and he's technically correct, but what is taking the FAA so long forming that committee, which then needs to deliberate and then make recommendations, which takes time. Remember that this is all gonna get worse. It's all gonna get worse because there's more and more and more flights every year that are licensed through the FAA. And in particular, that's SpaceX, right? But there's other new parties, new players that are also coming on board and hopefully will start to launch more frequently. So when I say it's getting worse, I mean, FAA is going to have to deal with more and more and more coming at them with the limited resources, with the limited budget. So the FAA is only going to get busier. And if they keep on taking a long time, then it really will slow everything down. And of course, from the FAA perspective, they are concerned about safety. And that is what very professionally Calvin Coleman said over and over again, that their concern was about safety. And you better believe that if somebody get, dies or gets injured due to a commercial space flight, Calvin Coleman would be back on the floor of Congress being grilled even more so than he was today. So really, the FAA is stuck between a rock and a hard place, not doing the best job. Congress is not exactly happy. Industry is not exactly happy. And something's got to change. But whatever it is that needs to change is not going to happen before November. So unfortunately, anticipate if we get any more additional SpaceX Starship test flights at all this year, expect it to happen at the very end of this year.